The head of Norris Bank Investment Management tells me recent market optimism may be misplaced. Now, you have to, not just any old bank. This is Norway's $1.5 trillion sovereign wealth fund. It's the largest single investor in the stock market. And I asked uh, Nikolai Tangen how ongoing geopolitical and economic issues are shaping the investment landscape. I think returns are going to be very low for a long time. I think it's, very going, it's going to be very difficult to make money. I think rates will be slow to come down. I think inflation will be difficult to kill off, and we are seeing wage increases in many parts of the world. We're seeing the climate impacting inflation now. We're seeing some transport routes being impacted. Uh, geopolitics, not great. So it doesn't look particularly good. So for somebody like yourself running the sovereign fund, in a sense, that's not a crisis because you're talking about the 30, 50 year horizon, but you've got to keep the uh, investment portfolio's valuation and returns up. How can you do that in low environments? Well, we have uh, some great teams who are picking stocks. We are trying to find companies which can you know, win even in, a, even in a low growth environment. And so, and then you just have to be there for the long term because you just never know when the returns will come. What about this, which, which of course the fund has done, moving into other areas of investment? I was amazed to discover you own half of Regent Street. <laughs> well, we own a quarter of Regent Street, so, but we do have some fantastic uh, uh, properties around the world, uh, in America, in Europe, uh, and so on. Um, so what would you move into? I mean, would you move more to crypto? Would you move, no. would you move into other areas, investment, assets, with a view to gaining return, greater return? Well, we are not moving into crypto, um, but there is a discussion in Norway whether we should be able to open up for investments in private equity. So that's an ongoing discussion just now. AI, you said recently that AI was playing a factor or would play a greater factor in your investment um, abilities and, and mechanisms. What did you mean? I think AI is one of the really positive things happening now because it's really driving efficiency gains in the world. And, um, you know, I thought perhaps it could increase efficiency in the, in the fund by 10%. Now, we have, a, we have a podcast. I interview the top leaders in the world. I had Sam Altman on the podcast. I asked him, hey, what do you think? Do you think we can improve efficiency by 10%? And he was thinking, you know, a lot. Uh, and then he said, you know what, I think it can increase uh, efficiency by 20%. So that's really good. So now I go around the firm, I ask everybody, hey, how are you going to improve your efficiency by 20%? Now, how are you going to improve your efficiency by 20%? Well, yeah, but it's not just about improving efficiency by 20%. It's by using AI to improve. Absolutely. So how does AI help you improve efficiency by 20% well, or 10% or whatever it sure. is? Well, what we does use, it physically do? Well, we use it for a lot of different things. We use it, we have, it, we use it for uh, various algorithms in terms of how we deploy capital. Uh, we use it to reduce uh, trading. It can uh, kind of predict uh, what the trading patterns are going to be so we can net off more internally, those kind of things. And... The $64,000 question, as they used to say, which is, shows my age. Um, are you seeing those percentage returns yet as a result of AI that you can quantify? Well, I think it's difficult to quantify efficiency in an organization, but we are seeing some signs that things are moving faster. I'm it's not great. sure what that answer says. <laughs> so, I mean, you're, <laughs> you are, you are, you are you're not going to tell me. <laughs> well, of course I'm going to tell you. We're just seeing it in a lot of different places in small things, you know. I want you to choose a color. Choose a colour. Red. Well, that's a very bold statement. Yep. Right. Where are you on the ready for AI? We've already had one guest who says dangerously unprepared to society. You mean we as a society? As or a society. Or uh, across all the... No, I think we are pretty... You know, I think we're pretty ready. I think we're pretty ready. Really? Yeah. In all its extremes? No, I mean, we're not, we are ready in some ways. And then... You know, we may not be completely ready right, which here. Which one of these would you check as being your biggest problem? Well, you know what? I think we are. I think we are acutely aware. Or, or you can write your own. If you've got but you know what? I think we are acutely aware of the ethical uh, questions regarding it. I think the big question for me is what, what is it going to do in terms of inequality? You know, in theory, it's going to give expertise to people uh, who haven't had it in the past. But I'm just not so sure that's the way it's going to work. I think. I think perhaps if you are not. IT savvy, you will not uh, really apply right. AI in the way it should be. So I'm just not so sure it's going to be great for equality. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you.